Media, I'm Robbie Suave. And I'm Amber Duke. The ladies of The View recently discussed school voucher programs, which give families more educational choices and allow them to send their kids to private schools. But that's not how Sonny Hostin and Sarah Haynes see it. Let's watch. Our public schools educate 90% of our students. 90%, mm -hmm. so only 10% are, are, are um, taught by private schools. And according to the National Education Association, which is actually the largest union in the United States, the labor union, they say that this um, voucher system actually um, gives to private school institutions money that is now not accountable to taxpayers. They also say that that means public school st students have this, less access to musical instruments, mm -hmm. science equipment, modern technology, textbooks, after school programs. There's zero statistical evidence, zero, that voucher programs improve overall student success. In fact, the opposite is true. Research has shown that students who use voucher programs leave a public school system and attend a private school system, they do worse academically, especially so, so, in math. So this is happening in the final thing that I'll say yeah. about that is vouchers mostly fund uh, wealthy families. They are overwhelmingly the recipients mm -hmm. of the vouchers. Well, there's something suspicious here ab about the fact that a lot of the people that are interested in this are Jay-Z, Betsy DeVos, Donald Trump. There's these, yeah. He's not a billionaire, but he pretends to be. But like a lot of billionaires are actually invested in this. And someone said something really rich. A professor of educational policy said, part of it is, I think, an ideological faith in getting rid of public institutions and moving towards a deregulated free market. Ugh. That was bad. Um, so I, I love how Sonny there is just taking National Education Association talking points and just saying like, oh yeah, there's a study that says um, all these things are bad. Yeah, there are some studies that have found less positive results for charter schools and other educational reform options in some places. Those then fail and go out of business because it's a market. In other places, you have extraordinary success, including some success under the old Washington DC program and also in New York. Um, but this idea that the public education system is being starved of resources because you're letting people choose whether they want to spend the money that is allotted per kid at the public school or some other school. When you freely let people choose, they're choosing some other option. And you're saying that's starving the public school of resources that, that music kids won't have instruments. I mean, how emotionally manipulative is that? And like, and it's not, it's not even true, by the way. I mean, the education, the public education system gets so much money, gets more money over time every year. If more money for the public education system was going to improve math and reading scores, you would have seen improvement in math and reading scores at some point in the last several decades, and you haven't. Yeah, exactly. And also, if you're just doing a basic supply and demand economic calculation here, if a kid leaves the public school system and goes to a private school system, then not only do you have a smaller teacher to student ratio, but you also have the same amount of money to educate the same number of kids on a, right. on a ratio basis. Sure. So it's just ridiculous. I was actually reading in the Wall Street Journal this morning about uh, some of these programs and the backlash to them. And amazingly, the president of the Chicago's the Chicago Teachers Union was quoted in this piece, of course, arguing against the idea of private school vouchers and school choice programs. And not only are, is the average salary for a teacher in Chicago $100,000, um, but they also have, of course, some of the worst educational outcomes. So more money obviously does not equate to better outcomes for students because the teachers unions make it so that the students are not actually sure. getting the benefit of the resource that's going to the school. Not to mention the fact that this Chicago school board president sends her kid to private school. <laughs> Every time. Every time. Every single time they do that. And they just don't want that choice for your kid. I mean, it makes no sense that you should be, look, we're not, the, education, it's gonna be publicly funded, fine. But we're saying it actually also has to be publicly run. Like It has to be run by the government. Even when those outcomes are bad, it doesn't make any sense. And the, like, the dollar figures being talked about here, I think people discount how staggeringly high they are. In some of the worst performing school districts, in, in uh, a Philadelphia school district, I think per pupil funding is, it's somewhere between 50 and 20K or something like that. So for every student, um, the school gets, the public school is getting $20,000 a year. Or you could say under a school choice voucher system, we're going to give $20,000 a year to that family and they can get whatever education for the kid that they want. 
that that's a lot of money. I it mean, is that's, a lot of money. That's private school tuition in a lot of places. Uh, yeah, more than a right. double in some cases. Right. Uh, I mean, my ch- church that I'm a member of, uh, the parish that I go to, if you're putting your kid in K through eight, I think it's like ten thousand dollars a year. Yeah. Um, so you would have actually an extra ten thousand dollars <laughs> that you can invest in their five two nine for when they go to college, which is a great benefit. Um, Terry McAuliffe was one of those other infamous people who had four out of his five kids attending private school when he was denouncing school choice and parental rights in education during the Virginia gubernatorial race where Glenn Youngkin pulled out that upset, um, in large part due to the fact that parents were so dissatisfied with the public education system. And it's a a combination of two things, I think, one of which is the ideological capture by the left of the public school system, and the second is educational outcomes. And the the whole point that Sonny Hostin is making is like, well, rich families are the ones benefiting the most from vouchers. Like, yeah, right now, rich families are the ones mostly sending their kids to private school, but the whole point of school choice is that you are able to make it an affordable option for parents who otherwise wouldn't be able to put their kid in a private or charter school. And if rich kids are benefiting from the voucher system, which, okay, let's say that NEA talking point is correct, it's probably because uh, wealthier families are more clued in to their child's education options and they're able to take advantage of these programs because they know about them. Uh, I am absolutely for, we want more uh, poor and low income families to know about these programs. We want these programs to be available two more of them so that they can decide, hey, this public school doesn't work for my kid. Um, I would rather take this money and and, and and have the kid go, if they can get in, to some other educational option or something. We can be creative with education if we actually allow the market to work. But right now it's just, no, it's all being funneled into the public school system. And then no matter how bad things get, the solution is just, we need more money. Like that's not working. That hasn't worked for decades. It really is amazing how these same people also, when you get to the college level, say that you have to reduce standards in order to admit a certain percentage of students from either um, certain income backgrounds or socioeconomic backgrounds or racial and gender backgrounds. But then if you take their argument back down to uh, early education, all of a sudden uh, giving them more opportunities is not acceptable for some reason. Like, you're not allowed to fix the problem where it right. starts, which is they're generally in underperforming or low performing sure. schools. And instead, we have to retroactively try to help the kid, which actually just leads to worse outcomes because then they have higher dropout rates in college, higher student loan debt. Uh, if they go to law school, they have a lower chance of passing the bar. Like, why wouldn't you want to adopt the solution that actually gives them a better shot and a better opportunity later in life than to arbitrarily get rid of the meritocracy that is supposed to undergird our university system? Yeah, it's totally opposite of um, you could learn from what's working and try to implement it, and it's it, they, it's the last thing on the mind of um, the teachers' unions, unfortunately. I wish some of these points had been raised at that table at The View. Alyssa. <coughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Maybe we didn't watch the rest of the interview. Maybe she pipes in and says, actually, here's all the... Uh, here's the non-NEA talking points version of uh, school choice, so maybe we'll have to look for that. More free media right after this. 